All right, so today we have this bad boy in the house. Can you guys see that? Can you guys see that? This is the Brighton Star 35 millimeter F0.95. The Brighton Star 35 millimeter F0.95 is an APS-C lens designed for the bokeh enthusiasts out there. It offers a wide aperture of stunning depth of field. In a market flooded with F0.95 lenses at various price points, the question arises, is another one really necessary? Like, is it really though? Well, that's what I'm here to explore and share with you guys today. So stay tuned until the end and I'll provide you with my final verdict on where this lens stands amongst all the F0.95 lenses I've had the opportunity to try. Right off the bat, this lens looks exactly like a 7 Artisans 35mm f0.95 and I can't help but wonder if they were made in the same factory or if there's like a similar backstory to what's rumored about the TT Artisans and the 7 Artisans. I've heard the founders of TT Artisans or 7 Artisans they used to work together but they had a dispute so that led to them to the creation of the separate companies. So while I can't verify this I, I just thought that was an interesting story. The similarities between the Brighton Star and the 7 Artisans also raises that question. Did the owner of Brighton Star used to work for Seven Artisans and now they just split and now he started his own company but still has the same design? Did someone from Seven Artisans decide to start Brighton Star? The lenses do look identical but there are a couple of differences particularly in the image quality but more on that later. Another distinction is the clicked aperture on the Brighton Star lens. Unlike many lenses in this category with a smooth aperture, this one has distinct clicks. And I appreciate this because smooth aperture rings can be easily bumped affecting your settings. The aperture ring on the Brighton Star lens has a good resistance and as, as well the manual focus ring. The metal construction adds a premium feel although the lens barrel does extend during manual focusing so there is some focus breathing. There is also the lens cap that Brighton Star provided. It does come off easily although Brighton Star did include a replacement cap for you which is a nice touch. What I do wish they included was a lens hood because this lens flares significantly. Despite those considerations, I'm quite satisfied with the build, its heft, and its premium feel, making it one of the better feeling f0.95 lenses that I've tried. Now let's move on to the image quality. As f0.95, the image that you get from this lens has a dreamy quality. Now I've exclusively used it with the Fujifilm X-T5 and I find the sharpness at f0.95 to be respectable. The bokeh is particularly interesting because it's sort of like a soap bubble like effect and it does add a unique characteristic and dimension to your images. The rendering at f0.95 is very smooth with a noticeable 3D pop. However, it does suffer from significant lens flares and ghosting, especially in direct sunlight. And unfortunately, the lack of proper lens hood exasperates this issue, making shooting in sunny conditions very challenging, especially here in the Algarve. Now, there are chromatic aberrations both purple and green fringing are notable if you are okay with the chromatic aberrations on the 7 artisans 35 millimeter f0.95 you will think this lens is acceptable as well now stopping it down from f1.4 to f2.8 significantly improves the performance the corners does sharpen up and the contrast sees a substantial boost. While I'm generally satisfied with the images that I've captured, I'm not going to call this the sharpest f0.95 lens that I've tried as, as touted by some of the YouTube videos that I've seen out there. Me, it falls in the middle of the pack in terms of sharpness. In my experience, the Lawa 33mm f0.95 stands out as the sharpest f0.95 lens that I've tested. It's truly exceptional. Now over the past few weeks of using the Brighton Star 35mm f0.95, I had a delightful experience. Shooting with these fast aperture manual lenses always added an element of excitement for me. It encourages a more deliberate process, I have to slow down compared to the burst shooting that I do when I have an autofocusing lens. The image quality falls within the same realm as other f0.5 lenses that I've thoroughly enjoyed, making it a solid performer. However, in a market saturated with f0.95 lenses, does this lens bring something groundbreaking? No, I don't think so. So if you were to remove this lens from the equation, there are other lenses that can deliver similar results. But that being said, I would still prefer the Brighton Star over the Seven Artisans, the TT Artisans, the Mikey, and the Mitocon, even if some of those lenses might have a slight edge in image quality. Why? It boils down to two critical factors, the click aperture from Brighton Star and the price to performance ratio. Uh, the inclusion of the click aperture addresses a common frustration with manual lenses, providing a more user-friendly experience. And I really like it because I'm not a filmmaker, 
I don't really care that my lenses, my my aperture is de-clicked. Maybe they can start doing a de-clicked and clicked version like what Alawa does to give you to have your cake and eat it too. But for me, I don't really like the de-click thing because my aperture always get knocked off and then my settings look crazy and then I just get really, really annoyed. So I really like that clicked aperture in Brighton Star. And also, priced at only $200, the lens offers commendable image quality, making it stand out amongst its competitor. Why pay more for a similar image quality when you can pay less and get a clicked aperture? You're getting an f0.95 lens with decent sharpness, this is going to be great for portrait photographers, street photographers, wedding photographers, anyone who needs a wide aperture for those low light nighttime scenarios. While it may not be the absolute best f0.95 lens that I've ever tried, it comes remarkably close. So there you have folks, in my opinion, I think this lens is a solid lens for its price. And I think if you already have an f0.95 lens from other companies, you don't need this one. However, if you're thinking about buying your first f0.95 lens, consider the Brighton Star 35mm f0.95. But what are your thoughts on the Brighton Star f0.95? Do you own one? Do you love it? Hate it? Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. And if you're interested in this lens, you'll find the links in the description. For me, it does not warrant the hype. It's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. I think people people just need to calm down a little bit. Or maybe I'm just a little spoiled because it seems like I tried all the 35 millimeter f0.95 lens now i know where this falls in line amongst the ranks it's a good lens for the price i do prefer the clicked aperture if i were to start all over again i would definitely choose this lens but make no mistake it is not like the best it's not like the best thing out there and if you haven't already consider subscribing for more fujifilm content thanks so much for